children's drawings over there. Is this like, kind of like Callum's room? Stop! I don't know who she was yelling at. Leave me alone! I guess the nightmare creature. That's beckoning me forth. Nightmare Circus. A circus burns to the ground on opening night, killing dozens. The owner is put to death by an enraged mob of townsfolk, just as he shouts out a curse. Now Raven, a dark-souled wanderer, comes to the ruins at dusk in search of his missing mother. Let the show begin. In search of his missing mother? That's ironic. It's a reversal, because I'm a mother. Searching for her missing son. Although I get the feeling that it's actually her that's the one that's kind of missing, not really him. After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. Home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone-deep coldness that never went away. I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Don, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum and did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now. Lost and afraid. Things never got any better. Drawing of just the son and, and mom. No dad. So this is obviously after the accident. The wilting. A solar flare has struck the earth. Millions of people are uprooted from their homes. A young meteorologist searches desperately for a way to stop global, global overheating. And an exotic dancer named Chance O'Hara is the key to saving the world. Again. <laughs> God, that sounds like such garbage. Oh, what's that? Oh, it looks like it's Callum at a doctor's office, or a dentist, maybe. Well, I mean, dentists are doctors. Cheese, bread, butter, corn, potatoes. Remember, drop off Callum, electricity bill, fix faucet. Faucet's definitely not fixed. It's a really bare fridge. Wine, water, some meat, and some fruit, it looks like. Lorraine, I received your letter and I am quite surprised. You ran off with your father all of these years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map, and then when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters. And now you write to me asking for help. I have another family now, and another life. Your father was a horrible man, 
and I regret the years that I wasted with him. I loved you, I truly did, but every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl, never really mine. Still, I would have fought for custody if you hadn't run away with him. It broke my heart, but I needed to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Lorraine, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day, it will be easier and I can meet Callum, but not yet. I'm not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact me again. Karen. Jesus. What a freaking letter to get. Your own mother doesn't want to meet you. Or her grandson. Emergency services. Miss Maylard. As we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you fully recovered from your illness. This letter is official notification that you are considered sound of mind and body and may return to work at any time. Please note that you should discontinue any medication that you have been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time that you are suffering a relapse, then please make contact with your local physician immediately. From Dr. Spencer. I see something. There's like a rectangle of white that I can just see just slightly. Emergency services once again. Notes from overseeing psychologist. Um, oh, diagnosis depression. Lorraine seems to be suffering from depression that began early in her pregnancy. Our discussions have made it obvious that these episodes stem from the grief of losing her partner, Don, who died about six months ago. There are also several unresolved issues with her father. After being kept under careful observation, we provided standard treatment for this disorder, including electroconvulsion therapy. The patient responded and made a rapid recovery. Electroconvulsion therapy? I'm pretty sure they don't do that anymore, do they? This is back in 1977. I'm pretty sure they don't do elec electroconvulsion therapy anymore. I'll have to look it up, but that sounds like old. <laughs> in in the old days, which were only like what 30, 40 years ago, our treatments for mental disorders were not very good. Honestly, they're not even that good right now, but they were a lot worse back then. Back then, people seemed to be just like, yeah, I don't know, do whatever. Just, yeah, shock the person, that'll make them feel better. Just some really weird and kind of barbaric things. Also, the whole drilling a hole in your head kind of thing. I think that was actually a thing. I need to look up electroconvulsion therapy to see if it's still done, though. I, I wonder. It just sounds like pseudoscience, though. Aftercare recommendations. Weekly follow-up and mood stabilizers. Discharge instructions. Lorraine has a newborn son, Callum, who was placed in foster care shortly after birth, when Lorraine displayed symptoms of disorientation and depression. It is our judgment that Lorraine is fit to have her son return to her, and as long as she follows her recommended aftercare routine and continues with her medications, we have faith that she will be an effective caregiver. Lorraine has her own housing and her employer, Susie, has said that she is welcome to return to her shifts at the diner. Norma Creed, a local woman, has offered to care for Callum while Lorraine works. It is with this support network in mind that we feel confident releasing Lorraine from this institution. Prescribed her Zoloft, I guess is the, um, the mood stabilizer. Okay, so let's piece together the story so far. So... Uh... Crap, I totally just forgot the main woman's name. Lorraine Kimberly Maylard. So, Lorraine. Okay. So, Lorraine met Dawn. It was super romantic. They fell madly in love. She became pregnant with Callum. When she was three months pregnant, Dawn died while working on the Ferris wheel in the park. Then she spiraled down into depression. Um, she was put in an institution 
for depression. At some point, she had Callum, and I guess this is, yeah, this is when she was still suffering from depression heavily, so Callum was put into foster care. Then the doctor said that they think she's well enough, after a while, to actually care for Callum, so they put Callum back in her care. Um, but she was still having trouble... I, I guess she had a relapse, or maybe, maybe I'm having a relapse right now. I'm having a relapse right now, into depression and horrible thoughts and things like that. And she uh, she asked her mother for help, but her mother didn't want anything to do with her because she ran away with her father a long time ago, which broke her heart. And the father was apparently a piece of shit. And yeah, I think that's everything so far. Did I read this? No. Uh, Miss Maylard. All right. Enquiry into the estate of Mr. Donald Williams has been completed. We regret to inform you that the primary beneficiaries of his estate, including the life insurance settlement for accidental death, were listed as Rose William and Richard William of New York State, the deceased's parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explained your situation, especially as regards the birth of Donald's son, Callum. Unfortunately, they were not receptive to our overtures, and they specified that without any legal proof of a biological relationship, they consider you ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. They have asked that we no longer contact them regarding this matter. I understand that this may have a negative impact on your current financial situation, and I hope that I am not being too forward when I enclose the bill for our services with this letter. Huh. So I guess they thought that she was just trying to mooch off of his money. I guess she hadn't... I guess she hadn't known them very long, if... assuming uh, Donald's parents even knew her at all, because... Um, Don died when she was three months pregnant, and she became pregnant shortly after meeting him. Because it sounds like the very first night that they met, and she walked him home, they had sex then, and she said that she might have even become pregnant then, so I guess... They only knew each other for maybe like three or four months. So I guess the parents just didn't know her or didn't trust her. Isn't this back to the same room? Yep, there's the Zoloft. Yeah, this is the same room, isn't it? Oh, this is... different. Or I just missed this before. Lorraine, things aren't right between us at the moment, I know. I want to try and explain it. I think it's because I'm so far from home and I'm working so hard. Every day working at the park, it gets worse. Like a... spring inside my head? Winding tighter and tighter and tighter. When we go for drinks after work, it gets a little better. The guys relax and we laugh and we're... we're good people again. I don't want to come home to you without being in my right mind. But when this job is done, we need to get out of this place. And we need to go back to the city, where I don't feel like this anymore. I love you, Donald. P.S. I was thinking about names for boys and girls. I like Callum for a boy. And Emma, if it's a girl. So he knew there was something wrong with this place. He could feel the... <laughs> the, the Innsmouth taint. Wait, what the hell? C... Any more words on here? Is that her upside down? C... Her...
I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. There, there was a wrench here. Now it's. It looks like now the wrench is on the water. It was just sitting on the table, but now it's on the the water thing. Like she's trying to fix it. Huh? The food any different? Uh. It's. I'm not sure if it's gone bad, but it looks older. There's no water, and now the fruit's gone. There's no label on this. I received your letter and I'm quite surprised. Oh, this is the same as before. Except, scrolled on it is, I didn't run away, Dad took me. For the new watch, it is very nice. It has made me a happy carrot. <laughs> As written by Callum, I think. Again, this room. Things look dirtier, though. Yeah. Stuff is more strewn around. Oh, God, what is this? Uh, I want to come home to you without take being in my right mind, but when this job. That's the same letter as before, except it's been, like, torn and burned. Things are just falling more and more in disarray. More and more pill bottles. Oh, the letters are all... Or the pictures are all bloody. Still not fixed. something on this TV at some point, right? I want to keep staring at it to see if something pops up, but I'm scared. That's the... wizard creature monster thing.
little Callum's getting baked by the witch to get eaten. Fucking hell, it's a bloody ice pick. version of the previous letter. As we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you to be batshit fucking insane. are told again and again, and from their shape we build our understanding of the world. Two children are led into the woods. They are lost for a time, but then are captured by an old witch. A child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park. He wanders lost for a time, before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch. In the oldest version of this story, the mother and the witch were the same person. I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? Hmm, just little scraps. Kids broke in today. It's been so long since I heard laughter, so very long. I took one of them. Couldn't help myself. It was fast, the others didn't notice. I liked hearing him laugh, this boy from the academy. I put him on a slab. I tickled him until he couldn't breathe. My machines came to life, whirring in time to his gasps and shrieks. I think this is delightful. The change wrought in me by the machines is not yet complete. There must be other children I can lay on my slab. What's going on there? K. 
Cal. Cal. The slab. Lorraine, Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. In my heart and mind, I always return to there. So, what was that then? What I just played through, was that her delusions? Or was that a, a memory of something that actually happened? It's interesting to note that right at the end there, when she had the ice pick and she was about to stab Callum, the, the monster was obviously, like, guiding her hand and forcing her to do it to begin with putting it into place, but if you noticed, right before she stabbed, the monster released her. It took its hands off. It didn't force the ice pick down into Callum. It put it into place, it guided her, but then it, it went hands off, and then she did it on her own. Does that mean what I think it means? She did it on her own? Did she actually just murder her son? It seems like what the game was... Um, it seems like one of the themes of the game is kind of um, fears and... Fears and nightmare sort of made manifest. You know, with the monster guiding her hand to sort of do it. I don't think there actually were any monsters. I think the monsters are inside of her, her head, her, her own personal demons, it seems like. But at the same time, the park itself does seem cursed. So how much of that is the curse of the place versus just what's in her own head? I, I really don't know. Yeah. This is one of those games where there's not concrete enough of a story for me to be super satisfied with what happened in the end, because I just don't even know if what we saw there was in any way real. Okay, so at the very, very end, she was reporting her son missing, right? And the person she was reporting her son missing to was the same person who was at the ticket counter at the park in her 
in her memory, in her memory of going to the park, which obviously wasn't completely real. Whether it happened at all or, or not, I'm not quite sure, but it certainly didn't happen as she remembered it. That was the ticket counter guy, the one saying, uh, asking her strange questions or telling her strange things about, like, where's the last place that you saw him, the, the teddy bear and all that stuff. So I guess the reason he was in the memory is because she met the detective and while she was in her own head, you know, waiting for him to come in to report her son missing, this was the memory or, or the, the thoughts that she was having. I guess that's why he was in her in her nightmare or fantasy or memory or whatever it was. I guess. I still don't really know what happened though. Did any of that actually happen? Did she actually kill her son? If she killed her son, why would she be reporting him missing? I, I don't know. And it did seem like there were multiple hers. The one that was angry and fed up with Callum and the other one that wanted to protect him. I really don't know. Uh, yeah, so just a quick summary of the game. Um, I really enjoyed it for the most part. I, I really like the fact that it's short and to the point. I really want there to be more short experiences like this, because not every game has to be, you know, 10 or 20 hours or something like that. So I really like the fact that it's short. It's, it's something different. Uh, I think it's really good looking. It's beautiful. It's pretty creepy. I like the, the lore of the place. As kind of cheesy as an abandoned, sort of demonic amusement park is, it's also kind of pretty damn cool. I just like the idea of an amusement park that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere on cursed land. I think that's pretty cool. The voice acting is also really, really good. It's very good, especially from uh, Lorraine herself. She's really, really... she did a great job. The only things I really didn't like about it is the couple of times you have forced cutscenes where something is, oh my god, about to hit you, but it's a cutscene and you can't move and you know you're not going to get hit. You know, it's supposed to be scary and it's supposed to make you think that you had a close call and you almost died, but it really didn't make me feel like that at all. It's just kind of like, okay, I'll just watch as this happens. Cool, you've done your thing. Now let me play now. So that was kind of eh. Um... And like I said before, the ending is its not quite concrete enough. I'm fine with a game not having an ending that's completely concrete, if some things are, are up in the air and up to interpretation, but I need there to be more of a concrete storyline, something more to grab onto and know, and know and be able to say this part, at least this, I know, happened. But as it is, I know all of the backstory, but I don't really know what the hell actually happened with Callum. I know all the things that led up to Callum, the depression and the accident and all that stuff. But I still have no idea what actually happened with Callum. But still, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And thank you for watching.